Hockey is probably the only game in existence where you may find a player in the stands beating up a fan with his own shoe. You may also find hockey stars tackling referees, coaches having literal mental breakdowns, or an entire city getting turned to flame because of a loss. Without further ado, these are the wildest moments in the wildest game. But before we get into the video, the question still remains. Did a Jumbotron really fall onto the ice during a game? Up first, we got John Scott's All-Star vote. So I've talked to the team all year actually and they've held me out of a lot of games just to kind of keep me fresh for that. Known for his ability to drop gloves, John Scott is not someone that comes to mind when you think of the All-Star game. But this enforcer absolutely shocked the hockey world when he came in at number one in the All-Star vote. If that wasn't enough, he led the All-Star voting and was named captain of the Pacific Division team. This stirred quite the controversy throughout the league. Scott even said himself that there were many more deserving players on the team. But at the end of the day, he honored the fans voting and proudly joined the All-Star game. John Scott joining the All-Star game was crazy, but the fans wanted him there. Absolutely nobody invited this next guy onto the ice. Cause at number two, we got the infamous streaker in Calgary. All right, it's 2002, during a game between the Calgary Flames and the Boston Bruins, and one fan tried to bring some life into the game by streaking across the ice. Unfortunately, the streaker's plan didn't end too well. After falling onto the ice, he slipped down and hit his head, knocking him unconscious until finally being carried away on a stretcher. Unfortunately for all you Skibbity fans out there, this era was before cell phones, so there isn't any actual footage of this embarrassing streaking attempt. But the iconic picture of the streaker hopping the glass in nothing but red socks will remain in the minds of Calgary fans forever. But this fan's behavior is tame compared to our next crazy NHL moment. This moment literally stirred up an entire city. We're talking about the Vancouver riots in 2011. 2011 Vancouver Canucks were a stacked team. With the likes of the Sedin brothers and Roberto Luongo, there were very high hopes for this Canucks team to take the cup. Lord Stanley has not been in Canada since 1993 and Canucks fans were pretty eager to see the Stanley Cup for the first time, right? But when their dreams were crushed and burned with a Game 7 loss against the Boston Bruins, the Canucks fans lost it. Fans broke out into a riot, flipping and burning cars, looting stores, and destroying absolutely anything in their path. This caused more than five million dollars in damage, and in the end, 301 fans were prosecuted. But hey, it's not only fans who take out their frustrations, sometimes it's players who take it out on the fans. And this next moment is exactly that. The famous Domi vs Flyers fan fight took place at a Toronto vs Philly game in Philadelphia. Domi was at his home, just sitting in the Sidman, when the Flyers fan began to taunt him. As Domi wasn't one to shy away from a fight, he sprayed Gatorade at the obnoxious fan. One fan then reached over the glass to get at Domi, but ended up falling into the box. And of course, Domi didn't hesitate to drop the gloves, but the refs came in to split up the fight. And after suffering a cut to the face and a concussion, as well as being arrested, you can say, this fan got what he deserved. But fighting a fan may seem like taking it too far, although it's not the first time that it's happened. Because at number 5, the entire Bruins team went into the stands in Madison Square Garden in the year of 1979. The Big Bad Bruins of 1979 earned their reputation in a game against the Rangers in the MSG. This was a real physical game with plenty of fighting and plenty of penalties. But it was only after the buzzer when things started to get real. Both teams were in a scrum near the glass when a Rangers fan hit Boston's Stan Jonathan in the head with a program. The fight spilled over from the ice into the stands 
with Boston taking on the Ranger fans. If this wasn't crazy enough, what happened next put this brawl into the history books. Boston's Mike Milbury ran into the stands, ripped a fan's shoe off, and began hitting him with it. It's hard to find the words to describe this wild moment, kind of like this next one, because Patrick Steffen's empty netter is one for the history books. Now, when a team pulls their goalie, it's a last effort, and it doesn't usually result in a comeback. So, with an empty net, as soon as an opposing player crosses the blue line alone, the game is pretty much sealed. And Patrick Stefan thought the same until he made the mistake of his career by missing an empty net a stick's length away. Come on, my miniature Daction can do better than that. But it gets crazier. With just 17 seconds left in a game the Dallas Stars thought was over, the Oilers get the puck to Alice Hemsky in the Dallas' zone, who then buries it, and the game goes to OT. For those who are watching it, this is one of the most electric moments I've ever seen. And even though I'm a Flames fan, I'm not gonna lie, after Alice Hemsky scored, everybody was up, everybody was in shock, and oh my god, this was a crazy moment in hockey history. And this moment just means that literally anything can happen in hockey. And with our next one, you'll see that we mean anything. Like that one time when the Buffalo Sabres Jumbotron fell onto the ice. Yes, you heard it right. A 22-ton Jumbotron came crashing down onto the ice. The stadium staff were lowering it for maintenance just after the Sabres finished their practice skate. Thankfully, nobody was on the ice when the Jumbotron came down. So no, it didn't actually come down during a game, which would have been extremely dangerous, but it actually did come crashing onto the ice. But believe it or not, there may be an even crazier Buffalo Sabres story, like the one from Taro Tsujimoto. In the 1974 NHL Draft, the Buffalo Sabres selected Japanese hockey player Taro Chujimoto in the 11th round. Okay, so what's the odds of an 11th round player getting all the way up to the NHL? Well, pretty much zero. And considering that there weren't that many players, if any, that were of Japanese descent, that some analysts wondered if this was the steal of a generation. Could the Buffalo Sabres have just found a new demographic of skilled hockey? Well, the answer is a resounding no. And the reason is simply that Taro Tsujimoto does not exist. Because bored with the long and tedious phone draft process at the time, Sabres management decided to make things just a little bit more interesting by drafting a fictitious hockey player, Taro Tsujimoto resulting in the rest of the league wondering about a mysterious prodigy out of Japan. Much like Taro Chujumoto, David Ayers is a name that the NHL has never heard of, at least until his debut against the Maple Leafs. The story starts in a game between the Hurricanes and the Leafs where Carolina lost its starting and backup goalies. In these rare situations, the home team must provide an emergency backup goalie to the opposing team. So, with the Hurricanes up 3-1 against the Maple Leafs, Toronto's Zamboni driver, I kid you not, David Ayers came in as an emergency backup goalie for the Canes. The opportunity of an absolute lifetime for the 42-year-old. With the Zamboni driver between the pipes and nearly half the game left, the Leafs just thought that they were handed the game. But the Leafs only managed to put up two more goals and struggle to get anything more past Ayers. As their confidence withered, the Canes scored three more goals and David Ayers would secure his first and only NHL victory. This was an unbelievable night for Ayers and an embarrassing 6-3 loss for who other than the Leafs. But Ayers isn't the only one who played for the other team. In this next bizarre moment, Chicago pulls their goalie during a delayed penalty call, and Patrick Kane makes a blind pass to nobody from Edmonton's end. The puck bounces off the boards and crawls into Chicago's empty net to tie the game. 
This is surely a goal that Kane will not forget. When goalies leave the net, crazy things can happen. Just like in this next clip. At number 11, we got Ray Emery versus Holtby. Ray Emery has had some incredible potential as a goaltender, and as a big fan of boxing, he also liked to fight. But in a heated game between the Flyers and Caps, Emery took it a bit too far. The Flyers were losing 7 to nothing in a blowout game against the Washington Capitals. With a frustrated Flyers team, a fight broke out between Simmons and Wilson. Not long after, Emery skated over to the Capitals end to take on Holtby. Now, if both goalies wanted a fight, it's fair game. But Holtby wanted no part of it. But that did not stop Emery from dropping the gloves and pummeling Holtby. Most goalie fights are lighthearted, but Emery full on assaulted Holtby, which makes it one of the craziest fights the NHL has ever seen. And this next goaltender has had his fair share of colorful moments as well. Like the time Patrick Waugh forgot he was a goalie. Okay, Patrick Waugh, one of a kind goaltender with plenty of personality. Losing 4-1 to against the Rangers, Waugh would make one last offensive effort in the third period. That's right, a goalie making an offensive effort without it being a pass? Waugh deked around a couple of players and made it halfway to the Rangers net. He finally took a penalty for crossing the red line though, and history came to an end. If you already knew about Patrick Waugh, then this kind of stunt isn't that surprising. But this next goaltender moment is something that nobody saw coming. In a Rangers vs Devils game, one of the NHL's most memorable agitators, Sean Avery, shocked hockey fans by turning around to screen Brodeur. Avery waved his stick in front of Brodeur's face to block his vision. And if that didn't make Brodeur mad, Avery then scored on Brodeur just moments later. Nobody in the NHL thought a player would ever do this. It was completely legal, but soon after the elite created the Sean Avery rule, standing directly in front of a goaltender and restricting their view on purpose results in a two minute penalty. Even though Avery's antics led to a goal, it makes fans wonder where the hockey gods were in that game. But rest assured, karma still exists in the league. And that showed for Steve Sullivan at number 14. In a game against the Colorado Avalanche, Steve Sullivan gets a high stick to the face. As he's heading to the bench with an open wound, a fan starts taunting him from behind the glass. The fan thinks he's safe behind the glass, but later in the game, Waugh fires the puck around the corner and into the stands. The hockey gods sure had something to say that night as the puck struck the fan in the face. This had to be one of the most satisfying moments in hockey history. Even Sullivan couldn't resist but coming back and laughing at the fan. If you think that's funny, just wait until you see this coach having a complete meltdown. One of the greatest things about watching professional sports is seeing coaches lose it. And this next clip is one of the best NHL coach meltdowns out there. Robbie Fitorak flips out after the Devils lose and throws the entire bench onto the ice. His hot temper cost him a one game suspension and a $10,000 fine from the league. You think that's wild? Check out this next clip. Cause Wyman is literally taking out the referee at number 16. In the NHL, it's common for a ref to get stuck in the play and take a hit. But what's not so common is when a player intentionally lays out a ref, just like Dennis Wyman did. Wyman skated to the bench and at the last moment cross-checks the ref from behind, absolutely leveling him. This brutal hit on the ref got him a 20 game suspension, which is the second longest in league history, and he had to forfeit over half a million dollars. But a lot of fans speculate if this was even on purpose or not. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. The Dominator Hassan was known for his aggressive style and for coming out of the crease. But in this game against Minnesota, he may have taken it a bit too far. Gaborik comes in on a breakaway with some incredible speed and Hasek decided to charge towards Gaborik to stop the puck. 
Hasek then collided with Gaborik, sending him airborne. He does a full flip in the air before landing. Thankfully, and surprisingly, he wasn't hurt. But this next guy wasn't so lucky. The Bruins and Canadians have always had intense rivalries, but in the 2010-11 season, things were more heated than usual. The Montreal Canadiens were up 4-zip, and Max Pacioretty was speeding up the left side of the ice, when the 6'9", Zidane Chara nails him into the boards, and he went straight into the glass piece that separates the benches. This has got to be one of the most brutal hits as Pacioretty lays lifeless on the ice until carried off into a stretcher. Thankfully, he would recover and come back to score a career-high 33 goals the next season. This was seriously a dangerous hit, so hopefully this next clip lightens the mood. And it should, because a referee literally scoring a goal with his third leg, if you know what I mean, is usually pretty funny. St. Louis comes into the Florida end and dumps the puck around the corner. The ref wasn't paying attention and didn't see the puck coming. So, in one of the most bizarre bounces I've seen, the puck hits the ref in the growing and deflects across the ice and squeezes past Luongo. It wasn't as funny for the ref, who was knocked back a few meters and was slow to get up. Unfortunately, this quote-unquote goal was called off in the end. But it's still a moment for the history books. If you think that was a crazy shot, you're gonna love this one. In a game against the Ottawa Senators, Buffalo's Rhett Warner blasts an absolute rocket from the blue line. This goes over the goalie's head and shatters the glass. There have been a lot of glass breaking shots, but this has to be one of the best. And it's not even the craziest shot on the list. Because how could we forget Kachuk's between the legs goal at 21? Kachuk came barreling into the slot, put his stick between his legs to take a rebound, and fired the puck top shelf. This was at less than a second to go in overtime against the Nashville Predators. It was the craziest goal I've seen, and as a Flames fan, I am so happy that it happened while he was on the team. And the shot happened so quickly that even on a replay, it's hard to tell what even happened. It's hard to believe that this kind of skill can be topped, but just take a look at these next two. Also, the last two goals. At number 22, we got Two Michigans in one night. One of the craziest moments from the 2023 to 24 season, so far at least, is that Connor Bedard and Trevor Zegers both scored Michigan goals in the same night. And for the less diehard hockey fans watching, in ice hockey, a Michigan goal, also known as a high wrap, is scored by an attacker starting from behind the opposing net, lifting the puck onto their stick moving their stick around the top corner of the net and shooting the puck into the net at a close range. It's rare to see one of these being pulled off, so the two on the same night is just unthinkable. This goes to show how the level of talent in the NHL continues to grow. But if you want to see some real talent when it comes to disrespectful moments instead of just wild moments, you should probably click on the video you see on the screen now. Because you probably won't believe how far some players take it on and off the ice. Also, comment which wild moment we missed on the list and you might get featured in part 2. So if you like this video, don't be a bender, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow, and see you next time.